Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week, September 20th, 2019, is Operation Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. This Facebook event has already racked up 2 million registered attendees and another 1.5 million people who are interested in going. But what exactly is this all about? And um, what is Area 51 anyway? In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about just that and also debunking some of the myths surrounding this mysterious location. Area 51 is a top secret military base located in the Nevada desert in the United States of America, just about 100 miles north of Las Vegas. It's also the center of countless bizarre conspiracy theories, which include myth number one, you can't find Area 51 on the map. This is a common myth and it's absolutely ridiculous. Just go and type Area 51 into Google Maps and you will find amazing coverage of the site from satellite data. You can see the runways and even some planes. Myth number two, dubbed the Roswell incident, in 1947, a mysterious flying disc crash landed in Roswell, New Mexico. And according to conspiracists, the military covered up the alien crash and all of the alien bodies on board, and they were transported to Area 51. But in actual fact, in 1994, this incident became declassified, and what was thought of as a mysterious flying disc was in actual fact a military balloon that was detecting nuclear tests. Myth number three, Area 51 is in fact a research site for alien technology and there have been countless sightings of UFOs in that area. Well, in actual fact, in 1955, the US Air Force were testing a U-2 spy plane. At the time, commercial planes were only flying at altitudes of up to six kilometers, but the U-2 plane could reach altitudes of over three times higher than this. Given this and other details that were declassified in the U-2 report, it's no wonder that people thought that this plane seemed alien. So it all began with the recent documentary, Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers, and later with his appearance, as well as the documentary producer, Jeremy Corbell, on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. According to Bob Lazar, he worked at S4, which was an area close to Area 51, and there he reverse engineered alien spacecraft. Should we believe him? Well, Bob Lazar believes that gravity is a wave, huh? and we know that general relativity, which has been proven right over and over again, tells us that gravity is in fact a distortion in space and time. This, including other of his gaps in his scientific knowledge, makes me question his real credibility. On top of that, Bob Lazar claims to have a master's degree from both MIT and Caltech, but in some interviews he claims to have gone to MIT first, whereas other interviews he claims to have gone to Caltech first. And on top of all of this, where are his degree certificates or his graduation photos? Between a universe where Earth is the only place that contains life and a universe where civilizations are very common, the latter is far more likely. Based on calculations using the number of stars in our galaxy, the number of planets, and some various other factors, Drake's equation tells us that within our own galaxy, the Milky Way, we should expect 100 million planets to host life. Although some more recent recalculations get smaller numbers and huge uncertainties, SETI has been searching for signals from intelligent life for many, many years without avail. It's very unlikely that a Earth-like planet can host life, but even then, the chances of that life being intelligent is extremely small. For example, here on Earth, we have millions of different species, and we're the only intelligent ones. Lastly, if you watched my last video on how to escape our galaxy using a black hole, you should know that it would take us over 70,000 years just to escape our solar system, go to the next nearest star using our current technologies. So unless aliens have developed warp drives, 
it's gonna take them forever just to reach us. And I can't sit still in a car for more than a few hours, let alone a few thousand years. Overall, it's very likely that aliens exist out there in the universe, but it's very unlikely that they would have visited Earth or will do in the future, let alone be holding secret meetings up in Area 51. Area 51 is probably a test facility for military jets, since Groom Lake, just north of the site, has the perfect surface for testing, takeoff and landing. Which brings me back to the original question. The military has stated that they will shoot any intruders on the site, but could they really take out 2 million people all at once? Well, Area 51 is in the middle of nowhere, and I mean middle of nowhere. It would take you to cross hundreds of miles of desert just to reach the place and it's a military base so there is going to be guns to take you out and if those don't get you their airstrikes will. Um, also it would be just as easy for the military to disable GPS and your phone signals so you could end up lost and dying in a desert. But say you did make it into Area 51, it's probably very unlikely that you find anything interesting in there at all, and it's very unlikely that you would even make it back out alive. So what do you think's hiding within Area 51? And do you believe in aliens? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you're still curious, I'll put in some extra reading material down there too, so go and check them out. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share and subscribe.